Hey, have you ever caught yourself typing up abandoned crossroads near me into your Google Maps? Did you ever have a school notebook covered in doodles of rainbows, a few planets, and dozens of pentagrams? Well, congratulations! You might be a fiend warlock. But what is a fiend warlock? Well, break out that old Necronomicon, memorize a little more of Dante's Inferno, and try not to get burned, because pretty soon we'll be... Have you ever needed something really bad, really fast? Like Amazon next day shipping won't cut it fast. This could be anything from the promise of safety for a loved one or the ability to enact revenge on your enemies. Oh yeah, this thing can be given. All you have to do is sign the dotted line. This is the choice many adventurers made to become a fiend warlock. But I see you asking yourself, what exactly is a fiend anyway? You see, a fiend in D&D covers a variety of creatures that inhabit the lower planes, but mostly consists of demons and devils. A demon is quite simple in that they're chaotic evil creatures that live in a place called the Abyss, and consist of anything from an abyssal chicken to the almighty Demogorgon. Being chaotic, they're usually more keen on murder than negotiation, so if your PC somehow managed to convince one of these guys to sit down for a chat, they also probably need an extra pocket sewn into their crotch to hide those massive wavos. Instead, you're more likely to be dealing with a devil, the lawful evil inhabitants of the Nine Hells that consist of everyone from the lowly imp all the way up to Asmodeus himself. These guys function like the most evil form of bureaucracy, enticing mortals into contracts that will inevitably lead to their impending doom. Basically just modern American healthcare. But seeing as that they'll at least give you the chance to sign the contract before they disembowel you, I, I guess technically they're the better option? And there's also Ultraloths, I guess, but they have stupid alien heads and I don't care about them. But devils are pretty much the OG pack negotiators when it comes to D&D. And while you have a wide range of options when it comes to warlock patrons, this guy was hiding clauses in the fine print before that Robin Williams wannabe had a lamp to piss in. But first... Does the thought of prep work scare you out of running your dream campaign? Do you wish there was a place to keep all your thoughts together and accessible to the entire group? Well, as you know, World Anvil is the ultimate tool to make the life of a DM easy and hassle-free. World Anvil is the number one website to share campaign notes, keep track of plot lines, create sprawling maps, and lay out every detail of your unique world. And you can do all this absolutely free, letting you do everything from create the perfect campaign to write the next great novel. So what are you waiting for? Head over to the link below and give World Anvil a try today. But if you love their service and would like to try out even more exclusive features, you can subscribe to their premium using my code YimbaDnd to get 51% off for a year. That's Y-M-B-A-D-N-D -D at checkout to get 50% off for a year. So, go forge your next adventure with World Anvil. A big thanks to World Anvil for sponsoring the show, and now, back to the video. So you signed your name and are starting your first day of Devil Boot Camp. Do you at least get some perks for what essentially amounts to your unending servitude? Yes! In fact, one of the major pluses of being a servant of the devil is the benefits. As long as you don't include dental. However, you do get a little Pact Magic. Pact Magic is magic from your patron that should help you in the performance of your fiendish duties. But don't count on them to be patient about it. Take too long or go against whatever contract you may have signed, and those powers can be stripped away. This includes, of course, Eldritch Blast and a bunch of hell-themed spells like Burning Hands and Command, which we'll get more of as we level up but you also get the Dark One's Blessing. This allows you to gain temporary hit points equal to your Charisma modifier plus your Warlock level anytime you kill a hostile creature, making your role in a fight pretty unique, as it pays for you to blast down a weaker enemy to gain the extra HP before you take on a more powerful foe. Or if you're a real psycho, just carry around a bag of chipmunks and sacrifice one at the start of each day for the boost instead. I'd say this is a pretty soulless method of gaining that buff, but didn't we just sell that anyway? At second level, we get Invocations, which are little buffs our Warlock gets for being the goodest little rotten soldier. Agonizing Blast is a Warlock's bread and butter, letting you add your Charisma modifier to the damage rolls of an Eldritch Blast attack, which I think is pretty cool. You also get another Invocation, like Mask of Many Faces or Armor of Shadows, but I'm gonna replace this option here in just a second anyway, so just grab the one that works best for you. Because at third level, our Warlock has done enough to earn a ton of favor from their patron, and be permanently put on Santa's naughty list. So they get a Pact Boon. And while I think just about every Pact Boon makes sense and will work with the Fiend Warlock, I'm gonna go with the Pact of the Tome. This gives you a grimoire called the Book of Shadows that comes preloaded with three cantrips of your choice from any class. Also, isn't a grimoire just fun to say? Grimoire. 
Anyway, this allows you to lean into the Hell's Angel persona with cantrips like Firebolt or Sacred Flame, or help out the party more with Guidance or Spare the Dying. And if you're anything like me and have to keep your car keys in the same place every day, otherwise they're lost to the ether, you luckily can never lose your grimoire as you can perform a one hour ritual during a short rest and have a perfect copy of the book appear right in front of you. But that actually leads me to my next invocation. Since we just got this new cool spooky book, why don't we fill it with new cool shit? With the Book of Ancient Secrets, it, you can pick two spells from any list as long as they have the ritual tag and cast these as rituals from the book. This allows your warlock to become a ritual caster and opens up a ton of new utility without expending your limited warlock slots. Great spells like Detect Magic, Identify, Floating Disc, and Find Familiar are now all available to you, as well as any other ritual spell you pick up along the journey. Using some time and gold, you can fill this grimoire with new spells as long as the spell's level is equal to or less than half your warlock level, and with a little patience, your warlock has far more effectiveness than your average demon enjoyer. But speaking of spells, you also get two new ones from your Devil Daddy. Did not like that one. Okay, moving on. With Blindness, Deafness, and Scorching Ray. However, I'd lean on the Blindness, Deafness more often as your Eldritch Blast is most likely going to give you more damage in the long run, and you're going to get more mileage out of never letting your baddies know your next move. Ah! Fifth level gets us two more spells and another invocation, so I'm taking Far Scribe. This allows you to let a creature write their name into a page of your grimoire and create a magical link to it. Once done, you can cast the sending spell by writing out a message to any of the allies in the book, and the grimoire will send them the written words as a sending spell on your behalf. This message plays in their head, and if they reply, their message then appears back in the book. Like one of those old friends and family plans from the phone companies, this allows you to stay in touch with everyone you're close to absolutely free. Well, except the soul thing, I guess. But we also get Fireball and Stinking Cloud added to our spell lists. Fireball obviously makes a lot of sense. You are the lackey of a hellspawn, but Stinking Cloud is just funny to me. <laughs> It's a pretty good AoE spell, and I get that it's supposed to be like the sulfurs and brimstone of the bad place, but I, I can't get over your warlock just squeaking out a fear toot as the enemy gets too close. Ah! <laughs> but doing the devil's bidding is serious work, and at 6th level, they'll grant you the Dark One's own luck. This is a d10 to any ability check or save once per short rest, and while I think it's neat, it's kinda underwhelming. And Will always fails the check anyway, so what does it matter? Don't you, you beautiful cocky bastard. Seventh level gets us another invocation, and it's time to upgrade that Eldritch Blast again. I like either the Grasp of Hadar to pull a creature closer to you, or Eldritch Spear to increase the range of Eldritch Blast to 300 feet. But we also get two more Hell Spells, with Fire Shield and Wall of Fire. They both do exactly what you think, but are great ways to have more battlefield utility while making horrific obstacles for the enemies to try to avoid. But it's 9th level where we get yet another invocation, and if you're a Pact of the Tome Warlock, you gotta grab Gift of the Protectors. This lets you do something uncharacteristically nice by again letting your friends sign your yearbook and essentially granting them a shared Death Ward spell for free. This means that every name in the book is protected, and the first one to fall to zero hit points without dying outright will pop back up to one instead. You can only do this for one creature per day, but this is a lifesaver in deadly fights and makes you look a lot better in the eyes of the party. Just remember, you can also erase anyone's name from the book if they happen to piss you off, so just keep that one in your back pocket. You also get Flame Strike, which is cool for clerics who don't already know Fireball, and Hallow, which takes an entire day to cast and kind of just isn't worth it most of the time. But luckily we do get the best ability of the Fiend Warlock with Fiendish Resistance. This allows you to pick any damage type and become completely resistant to it until you take a short rest, in which you can re-up or swap to something new. Fantastic if you know you're about to take on Dragon's Breath attacks or go up against a Celestial and be resistant to radiant damage. Like most things with this class and build, you get the most out of a little bit of prep work, so think smart and plan accordingly and you might accidentally become the party tank. 11th level gets us a Mystic Arcana which is the same as a spell but special for some reason, and restores on a long rest instead of a short rest, but allows you to pick up a 6th level spell like Summoned Fiend to plop a fat mean old demon right on the battlefield. But I like our 12th level invocation more with Sculptor of Flesh. As nasty as that name sounds, it actually just adds the polymorph spell to your warlock list that you can cast once per day, but for some reason they decided to give it a name like something out of Silence of the Lambs. But forget about that and hop on up to 14th level where we can find a creature we don't like and hurl them through hell. Okay, 
I lied before. This is the best ability of the Fiend Warlock, as you can pick one creature you landed an attack on and literally send them flying through the Nine Hells, taking 10d10 psychic damage and only reappearing at the end of your next turn. You can do this to any creature you have a beef with once per day, and as long as they're not a Fiend, they take all that damage straight to the dome just for poops and giggles. This is a nasty ability, and well worth the wait in my opinion, especially as this can be an absolute bad guy ender in just a single turn. Incredible. So what can top the Warlock Nuclear Button? Well at 15th level we can take Shroud of Shadow to cast Invisibility at will without spending a slot, and at 18th level we have our pick of Great Invocations like Ascendant Step for free levitation or Lance of Lethargy to have Eldritch Blast slow enemies movement. But finally at 20th level we become an Eldritch Master, letting us spend one minute calling upon our patron for aid and regaining all spell slots at once. So does this Warlock beat the hell out of the others? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> like, anyway. Yeah, buddy. The Fiend Warlock can be an absolute monster with the right build and is actually better than I remember. Not only is it the classic example of what a Warlock is, in that they most likely will literally negotiate a deal with the devil, but it can make for some of the most interesting roleplay D&D brings. I love the idea of stakes and consequences for any character, and the idea of having a warlock that's trying to balance the fine print of their devil contract while also being a good person to their allies makes for some pretty compelling character motivation. Not to mention going full spellblaster is pretty damn strong for this one. You're not meant for melee like a hexblade, so don't even try getting close. Use your Eldritch Blast techniques to move the enemy into position and let the beefy melee fighters get in the mix. Your job is to blast from the sidelines and rack up that consistent damage, but don't forget your Hurl Through Hell super move to just delete the most annoying baddies. Killing an ancient lich by shooting them headfirst through a demon's bathroom is just too funny to pass up. So if your favorite song is Sympathy for the Devil by the Rolling Stones, you often have to remind people that you do have a soul, you're just not currently in possession of it, and you regularly find yourself renegotiating the terms of your contract because you weren't aware of any infant sacrifice clauses, Guess what? You might be a fiend warlock. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. Big things happening on the channel soon, but remember, I read the comments, especially on what subclasses to do next, so shout out your favorites and they'll be quicker to make it onto the poll. Speaking of that, the poll will be out tomorrow, so give it a vote and maybe your favorite subclass will win out. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you soon.